Hey guys, it's Rita. Thanks for tuning in to my channel. Um, today I have a new series to start off, and I'm kind of excited for it because, you know, I don't know, I like looking at um, things in my collection and reevaluating. And so basically, I had this idea to do something like um, revisit reviews, you know, something like that, where I would pick something up that I have in my collection and have had for a long time, or maybe not super long, but long enough. Um, something I might not use very often um, and look at it use it for a couple days to a week you know something like that and really see how I feel about it um, a lot of this inspiration comes from being on the uh, makeup rehab subreddit um, you know people on there have different goals and some people really want to minimize their collection some people just want to use it and some people really want to stop um, accumulating and mine's kind of like a mixture of all three major goals, I guess. Um, so I want to, I want to like start shopping smarter and also using what I have. And the thing is, a lot of my palettes just kind of get left to the side. Like I'll use them for a couple weeks after I get them, and then the excitement kind of wears off. So my main inspiration for this was finding out that the Urban Decay Spectrum palette had gone on sale on Sephora's website for like $29, which is an amazing deal. Um, and so I picked my Spectrum palette up again, and I started using it for a couple days, and I, you know, fell in love all over again. So I want to do a review on that one as well, but this is... The current palette that I've been using the most is the one I want to talk about today. Um, the whole point is, on the one hand, if it's on sale, like some of the palettes I'll be reviewing, you know, you'll know whether or not it's worth it to grab it, you know, before it's gone. Um, or if it's something that's still available, always like a permanent palette, you know, maybe you'll get a fresh perspective because a lot of the reviews on certain uh, certain palettes, you know, were done right when they came out when the hype was still very fresh. So it's kind of nice to look at things through a different lens, you know, years, months, whatever, after the product has come out when maybe the luster has kind of worn off a little bit. So for me, this helps me go through my collection and look at things that I've had for a long time and reevaluate if they really belong in my collection, if I get use out of them, and if they're really worth the money that was spent. So the first one is something I've been using for a um, couple weeks now, pretty consistently, and that is the Urban Decay Naked Original palette, the fir very first one. Um, I wanted to do a review on this bad boy because I don't have one, first of all, and second of all, I've been using it for a good while now. Um, I've had it since it came out, like the first time it came out at Sephora, so I've had it a very long time and can give pretty solid feedback on it. Um, but also because I used it the last week when I went home because of the, um, the hurricane that came through, I kind of had to throw together a really quick bag and just kind of go. So this was the palette that I chose to bring with me along with one single to, for my highlight. Um, yeah, I brought this palette with me and it really allowed me to try different looks with it and see if it was still as sustainable of a palette as it was to me when I first bought it. Like something that I really feel I can get use out of and variety out of, which are things that I look for in a palette. Um, I am a color girl through and through. I love colorful palettes, but every now and then you need a good neutral palette and the Naked palette is, I think, one of those. So now that I've rambled long enough about what this series is, um, let me get into it. So the basics. I think this is like $54 nowadays. I think it was $48 when I first purchased it. So this is the original one. It was $48, I believe, and it came with a dual-ended eyeliner. Nowadays, they come with a brush. I think they had a big issue with production of those eyeliners for some reason. So now you get a brush with it, which is fine. I think it's fine. I like Urban Decay's brushes. Anyway, the packaging is felt brown felt it kind of looks like a chocolate bar and it has gold um foil writing you can see mine is very very faded um and the felt has a lot of dust clinging to it it's just the nature of this packaging my modern renaissance palette from anastasia is the same way um i'm not a huge fan of the packaging it's also cardboard and it just flips like this so the mirror doesn't stay up personal preference just don't like it but it's it's not terrible. It's obviously sustained and held up this many years, like six years, so 
it's doing something right, you know, even though it's pretty beat up. So the inside, you have a very, very small mirror in comparison to other Urban Decay palettes. Um, and it has, try not to blind you again, it has naked written in foiled writing as well. So I'm just going to fold mine back since that's what I've been doing a lot lately and um, show you the colors. So again, the dual ended liner went in here. You get 12 colors ranging from lightest to darkest. They're very nicely um, laid out in my opinion. Um, and you have a mixture of shimmer, matte, and glitter, I would say. That's how I would classify them. So the first one here is Verdant, and it's a very frosty kind of champagne-ish color. Um, I actually I brought a brush to do swatches, so I'll go ahead and do brush swatches for you guys on my hand. This one is Virgin. This is not over primer, by the way. This is really, I think, meant to be the highlight shade of the palette. Personally, it's a little too shimmery for me to use as a highlight comfortably, considering there's not a lot of other matte shades in the palette. Um, I use it as an inner color, inner corner highlight. So it's nice for that purpose. It's um, not terribly pigmented, which I think helps for the purposes of being a highlight, but something to keep in mind if you wanted to use it as like a base shade or something. The next shade is Sin, and you can see that I love this one because I have hip pan that recently happened just a couple days ago. This is a beautiful pink champagne color, and it's honestly one of my most used colors of all time, probably. I have it in another palette from Urban Decay that I really love, and it's right there. It's just a super shimmery pink champagne. This is my go-to neutral. I'm not a big neutral person, like I said, um, so I need a nice color that's going to intrigue me every time and go really well with bold lipsticks, and Sin is definitely that. The next one is Naked, and it is a light matte brown. This is another one of my favorites, another one that has a considerable dip in it. Really hard to show up on my skin, though, for you guys. It's right there. You can kind of see it there. It's just a nice creamy, creamy matte brown. I think it's quite nice. Um, the next one here is Sidecar which is kind of like a shimmery taupey color with a lot of glitter in this one. This is one I like to use wet or over a sticky base. Right there, kind of hard to pick it up. It's kind of like a nice chestnuty color. Beautiful sparkle to it though, I really like it. The one following that is Buck, which isn't the other matte in the palette, there are only two. And this is like three shades deeper than Naked is. So it's right there. Another nice matte color. I really like the shade to deepen up the outer corner or the crease. Um, it's a nice alternative to doing a really, really dark outer corner or whatever. Um, I like it. I think it works really well to add dimension, particularly to the shades um, Sin, Sidecar, and Toasted. It works really well for that. The next one is Half Baked, which is another one of the um, better colors in the palette, I think. It's a gorgeous gold shade um, that's very, very shimmery, very pigmented. Um, just a gorgeous, gorgeous color. This kind of really solidifies the warm tone of the palette. To me, this is a very warm tone palette, um, and this color definitely adds to that. It's a really beautiful color all over the lid. I don't wear gold a lot, so it's not one of my more used colors, at least anymore. Um, but it is a really gorgeous color, and I know that that was one that my best friend Jackie ended up using for prom because she fell in love with it, so definitely recommend it. Um, next here is Smog. And this is a really, really pretty shimmery brown color. Kind of has a little bit of a gold tone to it. Um, kind of mid-pigmentation. Mid it's not the most amazing, but it is very nice to mix with half baked to kind of give it a little more definition and depth. Um, I like it a lot. It's another one of my most used colors from Urban Decay. It mixes really well with their Maui Waui eyeshadow. Really like that one too. This is Dark Horse, 
and I like this one because it's a nice alternative to using the black in the palette for smoky eyes. It doesn't swatch very well with the brush on my hand, but I promise it looks good on the eye. It's right down here. It's kind of a more cool tone brown, I think. It has a little bit of shimmer to it, but it's, you know, mostly satiny in texture. I like it. It it works well for what the purpose, you know, the purpose of darkening a color, but it's, you know, nothing to write home about. The next one is Toasted, which I know is a big, big favorite of some people. It's right here. I really don't know how to describe this color, though. Um, it's like a rosy brown really hard to explain like a taupey rose with lots of shimmer gorgeous kind of frosty shade this color is tough for me to pull off because of how warm it is because of those rose tones so i like to use um naked and buck in the crease these two and then use these two also in the crease and outer corner to kind of bring in a little more cool tone definition to it um that really helps me pull it off so the next one here is Hustle, which makes a great pairing with Toasted. And this is a little less shimmery than the others. I'd, I'd call this one probably more of a satin. This one doesn't really swatch well with a brush either. There we go. It's right there. It's kind of a red-toned brown. Nothing, Again, nothing too special, but it goes really well with Toasted. And the last two are kind of the darker ones of the palette. They're a little bit of oddballs, you know. But Creep is the blackish color here. It's almost just like a dark gray, in my opinion. It has a lot of shimmer to it. Right there. Kind of more sheer than some blacks we're used to, especially Blackout from Urban Decay. But it works really well in the purpose of this palette when we're talking about like more naked, natural looks. Um, I think it works very nicely for that, and although it does have considerable fallout, I think it can be controlled depending on what primer you're using. And the last one here is Gunmetal, which is one of my favorites, even though I haven't used it too, too much. It is a gorgeous, deep gunmetal gray with blue undertones and silver shimmer. So it's right there. I think this is a stunning color and it actually pairs well with a lot of the colors over on this side of my hand. Um, they work really well to, all together honestly and I think that's the reason why I love this palette. I was able to bring it with me and create a new look every day when I was at home which was like for five, four or five days. I was able to create a new look every day using different sets of colors and still feel like I was creating and experimenting. So I am quite a big fan of this palette as you can see the colors are pigmented for the most part and they last a long time they blend very easily and it's really easy i think to come up with different looks using the palette um i see a lot of cohesion here that i don't see in a lot of neutral palettes these days so i'm very happy with this and i'm happy to have revisited it i think my main issues with it are the fact that there aren't or there is not a matte highlight shade um, the color Virgin is very nice, but it's a little too shimmery, in my opinion, to make a suitable highlight shade when the rest of the palette is shimmery, unless that's your, you know, your look. Um, I almost wish there was a gray transition shade instead of just two browns, but again, that's asking for a lot in a 12-pan palette. I just wish that maybe instead of Virgin, there was a matte highlight instead. That's my major gripe. Everything else I really like, um, they all work so nicely, and I think at least at the time when it was $48, the price point was, you know, perfect. This is a palette that I would really recommend to beginners, because um, I certainly was a beginner when I got this. Uh, I've been doing makeup for a little while, but this was really something that kick-started my obsession and desire to learn technique. It definitely came from this palette, and I think it's still a great choice if you're starting off. Um, yeah, I think after all this time, after six years, it still res like retained its resilience for me. It's still such a fabulous, well-rounded palette with um, good quality eyeshadows. Urban Decay has disappointed me a couple times in the past year or so with a couple of their Vice palettes that just haven't been up to par for me. But, you know, this one is still amazing 
and I still think it has great quality eyeshadows. So I highly recommend this palette. I know it's been out forever now, but if for some reason you don't have it yet, I recommend it, and after revisiting it, it will definitely be staying in my collection. Um, I'm a big fan. So I hope you guys enjoyed this revisit, review, whatever I end up calling this rewind. I'm not sure yet, but I hope you guys enjoyed, and give me a comment down below if you like the idea of this series. I think it's good to start shopping smarter and to also think about what I have in my collection and go back and use things that haven't been touched in a while. I think it's really important, and sometimes just revisiting what we have helps us um, make conscious decisions in the future. So anyway, I hope you guys have a good day and I will talk to you guys soon.